So we're here with the one and only Jay Wright. He has a whole lot to get out of his his chest. So let's get this started. How have you been? Man, I'm all right. I've been better. I've been better. You know, I'm just trying to uh, get my my payments that's owed to me right now. That's about it. So rumor has it that somebody owes you money. Oh yeah, it's a former loving hip hop half star. Oh, so where did it all start? Um, a couple years ago, I was at Young Dro's club. For the NBA Finals, I bumped into her. Um, he had told her about me, you know, a couple mutual friends told her about me. So she asked me to come do some work with her and help her with her situation. You know, her and her dude at the time had just broken up, and he kind of left her without knowing the business. Okay. Can we name this particular reality star? Uh, Yeah, her name is Jocelyn Hernandez. Puerto Rican princess? I mean... She ain't no princess, but she Puerto Rican. What would you call her? Um, I'm not going to be mean because in my heart, I still got love for her. So I'm not going to be that rude at this point. But, um, you know, I'm going to just call her Jocelyn. I'm, I'm not even going to do it. Okay, so you two started off on good terms. Where did it go left? Um, it went left after about eight months of us doing good work. You know what I'm saying? She just kept borrowing money. And making promises to pay me for things, and she wasn't keeping up her end of the bargain. And I was doing a lot of work for her, you know what I mean? Even outside of work, just our friendship, when her and Stevie would get into it, like on the 4th of July, they got into it, and I stopped what I was doing, came and bought a grill, came to her house, and stayed with her because she was crying and, and depressed, you know what I'm saying? So, as a friend, if I'm doing something for you, you should just hold up to your end of the bargain, and she wasn't doing that. So what was the first payment that she didn't own up to? Oh, man, there was so many payments that I don't know where the first one was at. From the T-shirt business that I started for her because she didn't have any merchandise. She wasn't making any money outside of her appearance fees. So from the businesses, I never got paid from that. Like, I never seen a dollar off of our T-shirt business. Um, and just when it gets into the T-shirt business, I paid for the machines and never got paid back. You know what I'm saying? Just you take the machine back? No. When me and her stopped being cool, she blocked my number. She blocked me on Instagram, so I can't even get a hold of her. I think the machine is still in the garage. It's sad. It's super sad. So that, that might be one of the first payments. And then even, like, when we were on the road, I had to hire some, uh, some people for us to sell the merch while we were on the road. So she shorted them. Yeah. So I had to come out of my pocket and pay them because she shorted them. So it's just all type of stuff. Outside of payment, what else have you done for Jocelyn? Oh, man, I introduced her to everybody that she knows as far as working on music. Um, outside of Fly Dan Tony, she was already working with Fly Dan Tony, but people like Alo the Radio God that wrote some of her music, Miss Mulatto. I took her to a lot of places. I helped her with her music. I helped her with her image, her businesses, the IRS situation where she didn't know that she could go make payments or they was going to freeze her assets. Like She didn't know about none of that. So I helped her with her business. Um, with her daughter, when she was pregnant, I was the only person around her. I was the only person on her team. So you, you, can't, you can't really move like that. And I didn't even get an invite to the baby shower. And the whole baby shower was my idea. You named the baby, right? Come on, bro. Like, she wanted to name the baby Bella. Yeah. I wanted to name her Bonnie. So where did Bonnie come from? For me, because I like Bonnie. So what was it about Bonnie that you wanted to name? It was just dope. I thought the whole situation of her and Stevie was some Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, okay. So I thought it would be dope if they had a little Bonnie out the situation. Exactly. I mean, that's who she said the baby daddy was, and that's who the baby daddy turned out to be. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was dope. So she ended up combining both names, you know what I'm saying? So I still thought it was dope. But for me not to get an invite, and I was there with you at your doctor's appointments, and I ain't get an invite, but the people I introduced you to got an invite, that's just foul. Like, there's no way around it. So rumor had it that Stevie wasn't the father. They said that a certain gentleman was the father. Who, who, who is this certain individual? You know what? I honestly don't know who he is, but I know that I can even show you the text messages. She was asking me to send her Ubers to go meet with the dude. So maybe it was some possibility and it just turned out to go in her favor. But she definitely was meeting with dude when it was on the shade room. It was funny that like an hour earlier I had sent her to Uber and then I seen her in the shade room with dude an hour later. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it, it is what it is. So tell us about Peter Street. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So the whole situation in Peter Street was um she had these envelopes that I guess contain information about Stevie J and some some legal situation with his daughter or whatever. I don't really know. But she paid me five grand, well supposedly was gonna pay me five grand to go deliver these packages wearing this monkey mask and running the VH1 office on Peter Street and do all type of crazy stuff. And then she was asking me to run down on Stevie for the five bands, you know what I'm saying? Oh, do you still have the mask? I definitely still had a mask. I have a Halloween costume, so, so, so can I borrow it? I got you, I got you. You can, you can be the monkey from Peter Street. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. So after the whole incident on Peter Street, did you two, that's when you two just burnt bridges? No, you know what's crazy? After that, I was still cool with her. We were still, you know, this is still during her pregnancy. So she kept telling me, when I give my VH1 bonus check, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to give you all your bread back. I'm going to just give you the bonus check. I'm going to pay you for the workout DVD. I'm going to pay you for all the work you've been doing for me. I'm going to pay you when I get my bonus check, right? As time kept progressing, I started getting busy doing my own thing. So I had to start separating a little bit from her just to do what I was doing to take care of business. Um, and I, I think she felt some kind of way about it, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't able to be with her at all times, which is cool. I mean, we, we adults and we friends, we're not dating. So... Yeah. I should be able to go do my own thing. Um, and just after a couple months, I had bought a, I had got a new house, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, she never came over. She never, no housewarming gift, no nothing. And then she, it was like a cutoff. So you were there before Bonnie Bella and you guys fell out after Bonnie Bella. So where did Stevie fall into play? Stevie fell into play, um, we have mutual friends. We have a lot of mutual friends. Shout out to Todd Uno. Shout out to Kim. Um, we have mutual friends, and he wanted to know who this dude in this monkey mask was. Like, he really felt some kind of way. So uh, one of our mutual friends put us in contact, and we had a phone conversation. And he's like, bro, I'm not mad at you. You know, I know you was just doing whatever you had to do. And he tried to get me to come on the show with him. So, you know, to flip on her and tell everything I'm telling right now. <laughs> What's the relationship between you and Steve as of right now? Um, we cool. I mean, we really don't have a like a real great relationship, but it's just he's doing his thing, I'm doing mine. I, it's not a there's no beef there. Yeah. I think he's a really talented individual, and I think he's a, a great father. So I don't have any beef with him. Like like he said, everything I was doing was for the bread because I didn't know him before then. So I couldn't have beef with you if I don't know you. So the viewers, they all want to know if you had that estimate how much she owes you what would you say uh, I would honestly say right around about eighty two eighty three thousand dollar ish somewhere in there uh, and it's sad like I said it's sad because I never asked her for anything you know what I mean and it was even times where we had got an office space on Metropolitan she gave me out of her own pocket like four or five thousand yeah. If I didn't mess with you, I'd have just ran off on you. You know, if I was a scumbag or a bad businessman, I never did anything to harm her. I always wanted to see her do good. So I took care of what I was supposed to take care of, and she didn't uphold her end. Yeah. Well, I've seen you on a few of her Snapchats and throughout her timeline on Instagram. So why is she claiming that she doesn't know you? That's what I want to know. You know, like I said, we have too many mutual friends. Maybe it's because I'm cool with Arian and Mimi and we've be we've uh, became a lot closer. Maybe it's because she doesn't want people to know that she owes me because she blocked me on everything. So I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know what I've ever done to her to make her act like this. But you can't say you don't know me because there's receipts. So if she pays you... Would you want to rebuild that friendship or just just let bygones be gone? What would you like to do? If she paid me some of my money, she doesn't even have to pay me all of my money. I don't even care. If she just said, hey, my bad, mm -hmm. here go 10, 20 bands, yeah. we could be cool. Because like I said, I really had love for her. That's why I'm not doing this in a disrespectful way because I really could. Yeah. Because I know everything. I know things that other people don't know 
And I have receipts, like full receipts and photos and videos and everything. But I don't want to do that because she's a mother at the end of the day and she was my friend. So she just gave me some of the bread and been like, hey, Jay, you know, my bad. We don't even got to be cool like we were, but we don't have to be enemies like we are right now. Are you cool with anyone that's on her team? Yeah, I'm still cool with a lot of people on her team, but I don't want to get them in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I'm still put like this. Everybody on her team still contacts me, and we still have conversations. So if anybody going to get in trouble, they all going to get in trouble. Okay. How many uh, uh, records did you two record together? Um, I took her to the studio with Mulatto. Um, we worked on probably about four or five records that day. Um, we were recording at Icon, working on records and her rehearsals and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So... I don't know exactly how many records, but we worked on a lot of stuff that would never, ever come out at this point. Why weren't any of her music released? Well, you know, right during the time where we started working on her music really heavy is when she found out she was pregnant. Like, we were we were on the road. She found out she was pregnant. So we cut a lot of the performances short. Um, she had a lot more bookings that we didn't take. And we decided for her to focus on her health. And you just making sure everything was straight for the baby so she wasn't stressed out. So the plan was, after the baby, myself, her, and the model that signed to her management company named Mango Kush, we were all going to move to Miami, film her own show in Miami, and work on her music and then put out her music. And as you can see, that never happened. Wow. So she never moved to, to Miami? She moved, never mind, I won't tell where she lived, but she she went to visit Miami for a minute, and not even Miami. She went to visit, uh, what's, the, what's the city outside of Miami, about an hour outside of Miami, where everybody try to say they from Miami, but they not. Uh, somebody help me. Where? Uh, it's like, it's like literally like 45 minutes away, but that's where her family stay at. They not really, you said where? Exactly, Fort Lauderdale. So they they're really they were really in Fort Lauderdale, not Miami. That's where her family stay at. So you know she grew up in Fort Lauderdale, not Miami. So is she really a former castmate or is she a current castmate? That I couldn't answer. You know what I mean? Um, I know her contracts say that she's still a castmate. From the contracts that she signed when I was around, she should technically still be a castmate. Um, but that's really up to Mona, though. Okay. So the Jocelyn that we saw, that we see on TV, is that the Jocelyn that you know, or is it two different individuals? You know what? She can be the nicest person in the world, and that's the scary part. The whole time I was around her, she was one of the nicest, most giving people around. She always made sure everybody around was eating. She cooks. She does everything. Like, she would make the perfect housewife she cooks she clean she's down for whatever that's that's dope but at the same time i've seen her just be rude and disrespectful to people for absolutely no reason at all so i see both sides you know what i mean so i get it i definitely get it the show is her but they only show one side of her on the show what was your take when i'm not sure who she was in the studio with but they filmed her when she was in she, when she was high intoxicated and and they made a fool of her. Oh, um, were you friends with her at that particular time? I was just, like, meeting her around that time. Um, what I will say, though, is from the time I was around, she wasn't doing drugs because she found out she was pregnant, so she had even stopped smoking weed. She was A1 on her pregnancy, so I, I definitely commend her on that, though. So the individuals that were in the studio with her at that particular time, are they still in her circle? No, nah, she... And that was the thing, and that's why I'm saying for me... It was weird because she didn't really have a circle. It was me, like two other people, and Dawn. That's it. That's all she has. And then her lawyer, Malcolm. So it's like, if you only have this, you probably should hold on to it. You feel me? Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> was she ever going to get a spinoff? I mean, that's what she told us because she was supposed to be putting myself and Mango on her show she promised us she was getting a spinoff and we would be 
like main characters on her spinoff and like i said we would all move to miami live in the same house and do work that was the reason she was able to keep all of us around she sold us on that dream you know what i mean for me it was for the exposure it wasn't for the money or anything i got my own money i don't care about none of that it was for the exposure of what being on love and hip-hop could do for your career it it just gives more eyes to what i'm already doing for mango it's probably the same thing you know what i mean so that's why she definitely says she was getting a spinoff. So after this interview, I'm sure TMZ, they're going to hit you up for receipts. So what do you plan on doing with those receipts? I mean, whoever uh, wants the receipts can come get the receipts. Like, like I said, it's really not even about that for me. This isn't even about the exposure for me. This is just about getting to her since she wants to block me and do all these things. Just holler at your homie, man. Pay me what you owe me and let's keep it moving. So if my Haitian sister, Mona Scott Young, comes knocking on your door, what's your answer? I mean, I'm going I'm to run to that check, but it's going to be done properly. I'm still going to be me. I'm not going to be ratchet. I'm not going to be what Stevie wanted me to be. He wanted me to look like a thug on the show, yeah. like I was out here gangbanging. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to do none of that. But it could really be about love and hip-hop, though. Okay, so before we wrap this up, what would you like Jocelyn to know? Hey, I still got love for you. After all the, the nonsense, the, the bad that you spoke on my name, the pretending like you don't know me, I still got love for you. Just pick up the phone, call me, pay me what you owe me, and let's keep it moving. And where, where can everyone find you on social media? Who is Jay Wright? J-W-R-I-G-H-T. Uh, you can type that in anywhere. You'll find me. And you're on Side Chicks, right? I am on Side Chicks. I play Ethan on Side Chicks. Shout out to Ashley. And season two just, just wrapped up, right? Season two just wrapped up, man. It was amazing. Uh, we have some really talented actors on there. We have some really talented musicians like myself that did uh, all the music for it. So, yeah, Side Chicks. If you haven't seen it, type in Side Chicks. Go look me up. I'm Ethan on there, the smoothest one you can see. What's next for your brand? Uh, next for my brand, uh, my project is out right now. Heartbreaks, Headaches, Hennessy. It's out right now. Um... I got a music video out. I have a lot of stuff going on. I'm writing for a lot of the artists in the industry right now. Um, just a lot of things. I'm more behind the scenes than anything, but you'll start seeing me more now. Okay. So you here first, and if this man doesn't get paid, I guess it's part two? If I don't get paid, y'all going to see all the receipts, all the videos. Y'all going to hear the convo with me and Stevie. You're going to see the receipts for the machines, the T-shirt machines for 16000 Y'all going to see everything, I promise you. I'm going to do like she did Stevie in the, in the video that we sent to Mona. Hey, you have 48 hours to respond or everything is going out. And when I say everything, everything. And that's you and Nikki, baby, that's everything. Oh, how deep are those receipts? Well, let's just say that... um. One of the castmates from Love & Hip Hop Hollywood yeah. was flying her out everywhere to do nasty things to her while she was in a relationship with Stevie. I got photos. Uh -huh. I got videos. I got videos. Mm -hmm. Like videos. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like, like videos. Uh -huh. Like those videos. <laughs> so, there you have it, Jocelyn. <laughs> If you don't pay up, just just pay me. Don't even do it to yourself. Just pay me. <laughs>